Hey guys, now I'm just going to decontaminate the paint via Great Garage Play Bar. I know we've done a couple, uh, or at least a cleaning video before, but I thought why not do, uh, I'm doing it anyway, why not throw the camera on and just film it anyway. I'll probably uh, speed it up, just so you guys don't have to watch something you've already seen. Sorry, the garage is pretty cold and it takes a minute to work this clay bar. I've already had it in my hands for a couple of minutes. Like I said, this is my first time using uh, O&R as a clay lubricant. I'm not noticing anything uh, different lubrication wise, but like I said, it does sit on the paint a little bit different than your average QD. I guess that's why they say it encapsulates the dirt or whatever they say, because you can say it like, it almost beads up very nicely, and then I guess if you had dirt, heavy dirt, it's supposed to just run right off. That's the idea anyway. But I'm no uh, scientist. Now I did decontaminate the paint last year, so it's not really really bad but it is you can feel a little uh, layer of surface contaminants on it but like once you go over it once pretty quickly it just glides over nicely so nothing heavy that's why I always uh, I never go with a aggressive clay bar I always use the mild gray bar uh, the mild clay bars. Honestly, I like the yellow ones, but uh, I'm not too impressed with this great garage clay bar. It's very soft, and uh, while you're working with the clay, or while you're claying, it just, it, it almost conforms to the panel too much, and uh, it's very, yeah, I, I can't describe it. I just, I don't like it. The best clay bar I've honestly tried is in the, it's in the mother's clay kit and it looks almost identical to this it's the yellow clay but uh, it's a little bit harder and it's just as easy to work with and you don't find you have a new uh, don't find I have to uh, keep reforming the clay even on the same panel because you don't need to unless the my spray bottle's running out here. Unless the panel's really dirty, you don't have to mad the clay over every like two two square feet. I usually do it every panel or so. So it's a it's a pain every time you have to grab the lubricant. You have to be reforming the clay as well. But it is fairly cold in the garage today. Like I said, I'm in the middle of winter. It was three degrees of uh, when I started, I'm not sure the temperature now, but I'm not having too much of a problem. But you can even see, I started out with uh, it a lot thicker and it just went right flat. I do have a couple paint chips, but you know, it is my winter car, I'm not too uh, worried about it. Paint chips are unavoidable. I even have them on my Genesis Coupe and there's not much you can do about them. The thing I like about the clay bar is you can get into these crevices very well. Unlike uh, the Nano Skin products, I have been meaning to try the Nano Skin for the DA for like big surface areas, but they're honestly, even the, the no name ones are a different brand name, they're ridiculously priced.
get them for $60 or $80. I have found one for $30 plus shipping or whatever. But I just haven't uh, bit the bullet on it. I guess that's the price of a uh, clay package anyway. And the clay pad can do, they say, 50, 100 cars or whatever. So it's supposed to get your money's worth. I just haven't uh, purchased it yet. So it's just gliding the cloth nicely here. Probably did that a little more than I needed to. Go over it again very quickly. Feel a little bit up here. I'm going to use the waffle leaves just to take off this. Do it in a heartbeat. I love the waffle leaf. Honestly, I'm not sure which I prefer more between the waffle leaf and the pluffle. I'll get the pluffle out in a minute. Once this uh, gets a little damp. But as you can see, that just did a great job. This is the pluffle. As you can see, the waffle whip and the pluffle, they almost have the same uh, square square design, although the pluffle is a little bit more plusher. It's a little bit more safer and a lot more expensive, by the way. And they're both made by the Red Company. Hey guys, so we're back in the last part of the video I decontaminated the paint. 
feels super smooth just like last not bad for a 12 year old car and uh, so next up I'll be trying out Stoner's B5, uh, B586 polish and seal they're all in one and uh, I don't believe this is on the market yet so I'll let you know how it is bear with me guys I'm just gonna give it a good shake and uh, put it put it on I'll be using a orange hex logic pad with my PC Bear with me, it's just in a kind of awkward bottle to apply. Usually I apply about uh, four piece size drops, but that's about the same amount. As you can see, I already taped off the hood to try and get you guys a nice 50-50 shot. So I'm just going to go ahead and start right about here. Okay, you only lost $217, not $1,300. Not 1300. Thanks. I know. So I've uh, kind of primed it a little bit. You don't have to overthink about seasoning the pad. I'm going to put it on a uh, speed of two, spread it a little bit. Bump it up to a speed of five. Remember you want to do by a, about a two foot by two foot square radius. So after just one pass, I'm gonna buff it off and then try and bring you guys in. I already see a, it looks a lot glossier. Buffs off super smooth, just like butter. Gotta say I'm pretty impressed with this product already. And I'm gonna try and bring you in. I don't know how you're gonna pick this up, but uh, I'll see what I can do. So that's the part I just polished. And then just about here is where I stopped. I don't know if you guys are seeing that. I'll turn off that light or put on a spotlight in a second. See if you guys can see anything better. Looks pretty good to me. I don't know if you guys are seeing any swirls up here. I haven't done Sorry guys, the camera just stopped. But uh, as you can see, I haven't done up here yet. And this is the part I just did. I don't know if you guys are picking that up. I'll turn this off one second. Okay, so the part I just did. Compared to nothing yet. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are picking that up. I'll leave it for the 50 50 shot. So I'll put you guys back and go for another pass. Alright, there you go.
Okay, you guys seeing this? Swirls, swirls, swirls. Come down here. One pass. Okay, guys, so we're back with pass number two. I'm just going to go ahead and work towards the tape line to try and get you guys a nice 50 50 shot. Okay guys, so we're going for pass number five, and I believe this is going to be the last pass before I take the tape off, try and get you guys 50-50 shot. So, see how it goes. Basically, I'm just going to do the tape line, uh, the top part of the tape line.
just took off the tape and examined the results. Uh, honestly, you can you can just barely differentiate uh, the difference by eye. So you won't even be able to get a picture. Um, there was no tape line 50-50 shot, like even by eye. So you can see that. The only way you could tell is by shining the light and kind of bending over and looking. Okay, there's a little bit of swirls here. Okay, there's more swirls there. So honestly, yeah, the product, uh, it was easy to work with. It, it was applied easy. It buffed off easy. It seemed to work fairly easy. Um, but it didn't seem to do the goal. So maybe I'll try it on a different color paint, a different type of paint. Try it with a different pad maybe. But uh, like I said, I did. The, I used this pad, uh, the orange, the, I used the medium cut pads with the Sonax all-in-one on a Chevy Cruze and we got amazing results. So uh, I was expecting a little bit more from this. So uh, sorry guys, uh, please guys, like and subscribe, thanks for watching. If you want to give me any tips for better lighting, better shops, better pads, better products, you guys want to give me tips for anything, uh, any things you guys would like to see, let me know. Please guys, like, like and subscribe, thanks for watching. Uh, there was a minimal reduction in uh, swirls, but that could just be due to uh, fillers as well. So, but you can feel that there is a physical sealing on it, you know, it's nice and smooth butter now. But uh, that wasn't my goal. My goal was, was to correct it. If my goal was just to seal it, I would have used rejects or some other sealant. So my opinion is that you need that other clear coat compound beforehand. So I can go try that another time, uh, but honestly, this car isn't worth two-stepping. It's my beater. Uh, it's been it was parked for six months, and bef uh, I waxed it before I pu uh, put it away. But it was sitting for six months in like a gravel yard or whatever, and I didn't wash it. And then I drove it for probably another four months into the into the winter, and it was cold, so I didn't wash it either. I just finally washed it now, so it's been 10 months. It looks pretty good for not being washed in 10 months, but it's not worth going to do a two-step polish over. So as for the Stoner's B586 polish and seal as an all-in-one, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, yes, it applies good. Yes, it buffs off easily. Yes, it works easily. But bottom line, it doesn't correct your paint. So uh, Stoner, I'd recommend changing it from an all-in-one to uh, a two-step product, a polish and seal, to after the clear coat compound, after you've gotten out all the defects in your paint, to come along and polish it to a nice shiny uh, finish. As you can see, you did a pretty good job. And then do a sealant as well. But change your label. So please, guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.